Um, go. Hey Jane, I'm Jonathan Balcom. I'm a biologist, an ethologist, a specialist in animal behavior. I work for the Humane Society Institute for Science and Policy in Washington, D.C. I live in South Florida, and I'm the author of this new book, What a Fish Knows, the first book to, at least recent book, to take a very close examination of the rich, complex lives of these underwater cousins of ours. Fishes are the most uh, underappreciated group of vertebrates and the most eaten. We kill and eat anywhere from several hundred billion to over two trillion a year. And uh, the science of their lives, their social lives, their sex lives, their cognitive abilities, their emotional lives, it's fantastic, but it's mostly buried away in scientific journals. So I thought, let's bring this stuff to the public attention, make this available for lay readers and non-scientists so they can see just how rich and complex these animals are and hopefully that will influence uh, dietary and eating decisions because until we stop eating them we're not going to be doing right by them. Humans just kill and eat so many fishes and they deserve better from us. And we're destroying the oceans in the process. Yeah, the oceans are in a lot of trouble. They're beleaguered. There's uh, global warming and ocean warming and ocean acidification leading to coral bleaching. So loss of important habitats for fishes to live in. And uh, of course, removal of all those species. You probably heard of commercial extinctions. That's when we've taken so many of a kind of species out of the water that there's not enough to sustain a commercial population. I would like to see that, that commerce fade away anyway because we need to stop profiting off the oceans and until we do that we're not going to be going the right way. Most people don't know that the oceans produce most of the oxygen in the world. More than half of oxygen production comes from the oceans so if we don't have that um, we're not going to be able to breathe. So if the fishes and marine life goes so go us. We have to do this to protect ourselves even if we're thinking selfishly. And you had said something when you were speaking here at the DC Veg Fest about facial recognition and fish. Yeah a recent study using archer fishes which squirt water out of their mouths to catch prey and so you can train them to squirt at one target versus another and scientists devised a way to test do they recognize a familiar human face and they do if you present them with 41 faces only one of which is a, a familiar face they've seen before they very quickly choose that one out even if you take cues like the hair and other parts of the face they have enough information to recognize that so they're very keen visual animals they recognize and remember stuff people often think that fishes don't have much of a memory but actually studies show they remember stuff for months or years they remember stuff over over decades of life a new study found that Greenland sharks may be over 400 years old some of them so they're the oldest lived vertebrates they're remembering stuff throughout their life that's longer than we can even live, never mind remember stuff. I want to thank you, Jonathan. I hope everybody gets your book. Let's look, see it one more time. What a fish knows. You know, I uh, rescued a, uh, a goldfish. We named him Google. And I can tell you, I can attest, I can testify that he had very strong emotions and he had a, a life and he wanted to live. And uh, thank God he's living with an animal activist now. He was. Uh, brought home uh, as a party favor by someone who abandoned him and um, you know I saw that that this was really painful and tragic for him and I'm glad that um, especially considering what you told me I'm glad I took action so thank you so much my pleasure Jane thanks for having me on the show and one final thing you know there's so many meat alternatives they have um, simple truth Gardein um, and other meat meatless fishless fish we had one by uh, Gardein the other day that I could have sworn was fish and ditto for crab cakes so if you want that seafoody taste you can get it completely meatless now. I ate in a place in uh, Sydney, Australia last year called Bliss and Chips, a new vegan fish and chip shop. They used the Guardian fish and it was delicious. I have to admit I haven't eaten a fish in about 30 years but from what I remember of that experience I wouldn't have been able to tell the difference. You are so right. And there's actually a vegan uh, tofush and chips. There's a vegan pub in London where we had tofush and chips, which if you take the nori that they use on sushi and you wrap it in tofu and, and batter it and fry it, mm. it's just like fish too. Sign All me right. up. I'll try it. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, thank you for spreading the word. Sure thing, Jane. Thanks for all you do. Okay. You too. Bye.